Man, God is already here. How many of you know God is already here? He walked in with some of you tonight. He's inside of you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Man. Thank you, worship team. Chris, if you'll hang with me for just a second, my man. Thank you, guys. We're going to call you back up at the end. Thank you guys so much. You guys can be seated. Thank you. Keep playing that, that chorus there, Chris. And read some scripture. I love coming to the way. You know, I feel very the same. Like, this is a family for me. I, I, I so enjoy coming. Thank you guys for having me again. Thank you for showing up tonight. I have confidence God's really going to speak to you. Uh, I heard my father was here just like a week, a week and a half ago. Do you enjoy Ivan Tate? <laughs> what can I say? Those are the shoes that I had to fill my whole life. Dear God. I let that go a long time ago. But I'll tell you, any of you who ever say I sound like my dad or act like my dad, it is one of the greatest compliments I can ever give. So please give that to me all that you want. I really appreciate that. 50 years of ministry my dad is celebrating this year. 50 years being faithful to my mother, never any other woman. 50 years walking with Jesus, never turned away. 50 years truly serving God. That's worth celebrating. And we're going to have a big celebration for him this year. We're going to Orlando, all the family. We're just going to be with them and, and celebrate him. But man, my dad, he's a, he's a hero. Thank you guys for honoring him. Thank you for loving him as well. <clears throat> Genesis 3 verse 7 read two scriptures and then we're going to get into the word tonight at that moment their eyes were opened we're in the garden of eden right now and adam and eve have just sinned eve took of the fruit ate it and this is what happened directly after at that moment their eyes adam and eve's were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves, verse 10 through 11. And he replied, I heard you walking in the garden. This is when God is now looking for them and he can't find them. So Adam replied, I heard you walking in the garden. So I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. God replies, who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked, have you eaten from the tree of whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? Verse 21, and the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. And John bore witness later on saying, this is John 1 32. John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he came down and remained upon Jesus. I want to talk to you tonight about hosting the dove, hosting the dove. Jesus, we thank you, God. We worship you. Just move tonight. God, just begin to flap your wings, Holy Ghost. Jesus, just begin to soar over us tonight, this whole year. I thank you, God, that this will be a launching night for many, that this will be a night of launching ministerial gifts, hidden power that is inside of people tonight, that they will know that they have a part to play, and you will give them the confidence and boldness to get off of the bench and begin to act and perform in the power you have placed inside of them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Everybody said amen. Thank you, Chris. I invite you to begin. We have these incredible two scriptures here in two places. One found in the Old Testament at the very beginning. And then the other found at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And we see Jesus in this amazing display when he wants to relate to everything that man has to go through because he did unzip his divinity he did unzip his godhood by stepping out of heaven and entering into the womb of a woman and was raised, had dirty diapers and had to walk like us and depend on someone to feed him and, and do all of that. It's, it's such an amazing mystery and a miracle that God himself entered into human flesh. And he walked 30 years anonymously, basically, besides, you know, uh, many think he was a carpenter, uh, most theologians think that he was actually uh, a builder of stone, a mason. But either way, he was working a normal job and, and he was dealing with taxes and, 
and going through life for 30 years and this event happens where he knows when his time is set because he was so in the rhythm of God, his father, that he knew exactly when it was time to begin. And up to this point, you have heard nothing basically about Jesus. We have little snippets in the book of Luke about Jesus when he was 12 and, and he's in, this, uh, in, the, in the synagogue and he's basically schooling all the priests and stuff on their own stuff that they teach and they're like who's this kid and how dare he come up here and try to tell us what's going on you know <laughs> what wh who are who is this kid and his mom lost him for three days I don't know if any parents in here can relate have you ever lost your child I don't know how you felt but you should have felt guilty so um but so basically they lose him for three days and and then they come and you know of all the people being upset you know you think you know Jesus has the right to be upset but his mom gets upset and says where you been we've been looking for you and he responds woman I was about my father's business y'all lost me you know I, I ain't gonna try to even make you feel better about that I'm about my father's business y'all lost me but anyway you know but <laughs> so it, we, but besides that we really have nothing about Jesus since that little snippet when he's about 12 years old and all of a sudden he comes and, he, and John the Baptist, you know, crazy man, you know, ate locust and wild honey, but he had a powerful message and God worked through him. And just as a testament to some of y'all who think you're crazy, hey, God can use you <laughs> if you use John the Baptist. So I hope you feel better about yourself, but we don't need all your crazy. You know what I mean? Conceal some of that. Keep some of that to yourself. Praise God. But uh, besides that, you know, God still loves you. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the people who you're like, you know, hey, it doesn't matter if you got a singing voice, you know, like you should sing out to God. Just don't do it in front of me. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> anyway, God loves it. I don't. Uh, so, but uh, he, he's there and, and he goes and he's baptized in the water. And this amazing thing happens where the Bible describes, it says in all of the gospels, this story is in there. And in the book of John, it says that, that as he comes out of the water, it says the heavens are rend open. That word rend means to literally rip apart in a violent action. So Jesus breaks open the water and heaven breaks open at the same time. And it says that the Holy Spirit begins to descend like a dove. Now we're not calling the Holy Spirit a dove, but in the way that he descended, it was like a dove. And if you'll notice through the all whole Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament, when God refers to you as, you know, you're like the palm tree in Psalm, you know, 96 and, or 92. And, and, you know, that God, Jesus is like this. The Holy Spirit's like a fire and he's all these things. Even though he's not calling him that, there are attributes and characteristics that are similar to what he's saying. So we take note of it. So it said he descended on him like a dove and he remained. And when it said he remained, my heart began to beat. I began to feel this strong hunger inside and said, Holy Spirit, you never had to leave Jesus for any reason because he never did anything to grieve you. And if you can imagine, the dove of all the birds is one of the most flighty, nervous birds that they are. It's very, it's very quick to fly away. It's very quick to, you make a sudden movement. And, and if you could see this, this dove lands on Jesus. And, and if you can imagine, if you had the dove on you, how would you be walking? You'd be walking every step so that you wouldn't scare the dove, so you wouldn't fly away. You'd be walking every step aware of the dove. And Jesus walked every step of his life aware and sensitive to the dove. What would it be like if, if we began to be a hosting resting place? Because let me tell you something, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, but the Holy Spirit does not rest upon all of us all the time because we have habits that grieve him. We have things in our life that, that push him away. And even though we want to host the dove, there's things that get in our way. And, but what would happen if you began to walk every step aware of the dove? If you began to walk knowing that he's sensitive, would you talk the same way to your wife? Would you, would you talk the same way to your children? Would, would, you, would you consider church just a, you know, a commodity that you do every once in a while? Or would you take God's priorities as your priorities? Would, would you be careful the things you say, the profanities from your mouth? Would, would we be more aware when somebody cuts us off in traffic and maybe we don't throw the finger, but instead we say, dear God, I want to throw the finger, but I say, God bless you instead. I mean, what... 
I mean, honestly, you know, how would we act if we were aware at all times of the dove? It said that he was clothed with the dove. This, this person, the Holy Spirit is not an entity, is not a cloud. He's a person. He has emotions. He has feelings. He, he can be grieved. He can be excited. He, he is tender. Jesus took great defense and defended the Holy Spirit so strong. One time they come to him and they say, you're casting out devils by the devil himself. And Jesus says, now listen, I, I, I can take a lot from y'all. You know, you can, you, can, you can make fun of me. You can say things against me. You can even make things against my Father in heaven. But don't talk about the Holy Ghost. We're so protective of this third person. It, it's, this, it's this relationship that the Father and the Son, even though they're all God, they, they, they have this intimate protection, this covetedness that, that all sins will be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to, I can't tolerate that. Jesus himself said, I got to protect. He's too, he's too gentle. He's too, he's too mild. He's too, he's everything. He's even precious to Jesus. But you see, as he was covered, he was showing us the example because even though he was God when he was on earth, he was fully 100% man. And he was showing us in those three years, every miracle, everything that could be done, when a man would allow himself to be the hosting place of the dove, what can happen through a man submitted fully to the, to the dove? And in Genesis 3, we go back and we see that even though Jesus was walking covered by something, he was almost mantled by it. He literally was, it was on him at all times. It was a substance that Jesus carried. You see, the presence of God isn't something that we just talk about. It actually is substantive. Let me prove this to you. Well, the Bible says that when, when, when uh, Peter would walk through the streets, it said that there was something that was in his shadow. That was so powerful that how could it be that a man who had issues and sin himself understood what it was like to host the dove to such a place that there was a tangible essence on him that people begin to catch on and say, listen, if you're sick, he's walking out of that building. And if you'll just get them and lay them in the street somewhere between where he's walking and where he's going, they're going to catch something because just if his shadow comes across because there was a substance. Do you, do you remember when, when Jesus was walking, one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible, and he said he's walking and the crowds are shoving up against him. They're, they're rubbing against him. He's trying to get to this house. And just so you know, for context, there was never a time when Jesus walked around with anything less than 5,000 people on average that would be following following him. Why? Because you didn't know what was going to happen when you were with Jesus. I mean, you just touch him and stuff happened. You're around him. The words he's saying, nobody had ever heard it before. He was pretty spectacular. You know that he never needed an Instagram to say where he was going. So you'd show up to his meeting. You know, he never ever needed a Facebook post to say where he was going. So you show up to his meeting. You know that he never needed a flyer. He didn't hire an advertising team. He didn't need none of that. You know what he did? He just allowed the dove, the rest and the Holy Ghost to perform things through him so miraculous and powerful that once a child's cancer got healed they told the whole family and once he got off of drugs you'll tell your whole family and bring them to church and once the devil gets delivered from you you'll have no problem telling your wife and your son you better get there you see our advertising's flipped today in the church we we depend on everything but the power of God we get all of the smoke we can and all the light and I love the smoke I love the lights but you know what we're trying to imitate the glory cloud with more haze in the atmosphere but you know something he doesn't need none of this microphone he he doesn't need any of these instruments. God bless him. He didn't need nothing. He didn't walk out there in the desert with a sound system, y'all. He didn't have a sound system. But the power of God was so strong on him, you just gave him a few loaves of bread and a few fish, and he pressed it, and then he had enough to feed 5,000 men, not to mention women and children. The advertising was in the power. <laughs> His advertising was a little bit different. And it said that as he was walking through the cloud, this woman who had an issue with bleeding came up and she thought to herself something amazing. She said, if I just touch him, he didn't even have to know that I touched him. Matter of fact, I don't want him to see me touch him. But I'm going to slither through this crowd and I'm going to sneak up on him. I'm going to do it so quietly he won't even know. But look how aware Jesus was of the dove, of the substance of what he carried. It said that the moment that she touched his garment, 
she was healed but that's not the most incredible part the most incredible part is that Jesus was facing the other direction but because he was so aware of the substance and what he carried, when there was a withdrawal of even 1% of what was on him, he turned and he said, who touched me? I have had a withdrawal from a substance that I carry around. I actually am so aware of this, this substance, this thing that I carry. What if the Way World Outreach became the church that became to walk around that the staff started imitating? I'm walking with the dove and I'm aware, I'm sensitive to the dove so my speech changes. What if you as a leader of your family begin to walk around with the dove? What would happen? The substance would not have to depart because the dove would never have to depart. He'd never have to leave and what could happen? And Paul was working on tents, the Bible says. And as he'd be working on tents, sweating, just working on tents, people start to notice that the presence of God is so heavy on this man. There's a substance so heavy. His working shirts, the little garment, the thing he wipes his sweat with, just get a hold of that. Then take it over to your aunt. And if you can get that thing that was in his hand and just put it on that aunt, she'll get off of the bed of sickness and she'll get up. Why? Because there's a substance. I don't know how to describe it, but something's on him. But see, at the beginning, Adam and Eve were naked, but they didn't know it. No sin had entered yet. They weren't ashamed. There was no such thing as shame. There's no such thing as guilt. They were just walking with the Lord, eating fruit, loving on each other, naming some animals, having a blast. But this thing called sin enters in, and what's the first thing that happens to people they see all of their things that expose them. You see, when you're obsessed with the presence of God and his call for your life, you're not inward focused. That's why you don't get depressed because depression, even though it is sad, it is self-absorbed. Loneliness, even though it is sad and God will heal your loneliness, it is all about you and it is self-absorbed. But when God begins to touch you, you begin to get so obsessed with him that you stop remembering all your insecurities. You, you start to get bold about stuff. Even though you can't say amen like he can, you as a woman of God get up and say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe that my family will change now. And even though you're a man that used to be timid and, and you're just shy around everybody, your shyness, you don't think about it anymore because you've been, you've been remaining and you've been talking with the Holy Ghost. There's something that's changing on you. A substance is getting on you. And it's getting so much you have to overflow on someone else. But it says that once they sinned, they hid. And for the first time ever, God had to literally make clothes for them. But they were fake clothing. They were not the original clothing. Because man and woman were clothed with the glory of God. And once the glory of God lifted, they saw themselves became ashamed. Because the substance, the weight that was on them lifted because of sin. And so for the first time, we see the first clothes that are fake clothing being given to the man and the woman but it's not too different than us today think about it we go home we have things in our life insecurities so what do we do we try to clothe ourselves with something we go ahead and we get the bottle we say dear god i can't think about my issues and my problems that are going on but but i i have to i got to try to I'm going to clothe myself. I got I to gotta get comfort somewhere. So, so we go to the bottle. And, and if the bottle's not working, we go ahead and we just start. Why don't we just light up something going on here? Because I can't deal with this turmoil. I don't have the answers for what's going on in my life. So I got to pull something else out. You're putting on fake clothing. or If you're not you know, into the smoking or maybe you're too dignified as a Christian for the drinking. So you know what we as Christians do? We come to the refrigerator. I'm not playing. You get comfort from somewhere. You might think, well, I'm too dignified for those drinkers. I'm too dignified for this. But you'll go to the kitchen and take down a gallon of bluebell. You'll take down a whole apple pie. Your heart's beating weird now. You got high blood pressure all the time because you're so addicted to sugar. I'm, I'm preaching real in here tonight. You're going there. Why? It's the Christian drug. But you're still finding comfort in those biscuits and you're still finding comfort in the pancakes. But the Holy Ghost is your comfort and you ain't turning to him. 
Maybe you get lost in a romantic novel, you know, ladies. I'm not happy with the man I have, and I can't deal with what I got, so I got to find a fantasy somewhere else. Ooh, some women didn't like that. I better put that down. I better, whoo, that's hot right there. Pastor, that was hot. Or my favorite, you know, you, uh, you come back, and life is so intense and so overwhelming. Some situations are so bad that the best thing you can do is pop in the drugs and try to take the sleeping pill, maybe, and just try to escape life and just lay down on the bed because I, I, I can't face the things that are going on in my life and there's too many issues and too many problems and I, I just can't. My family, you know, I don't know how to bring them back together. I've been preaching all I can to my children, but they're still going crazy and and I, you can't sleep because you got anxiety that's so strong. And, but you're just taking another sleeping pill. Let me get a little bit more of that. And, and now your whole hormones are all jacked up because you could, anything I can do to just please escape, can I just go to sleep? But it's all fake clothing. What was it? about Jesus that he had a person come upon him and remain who is this person the dove the Holy Spirit Ezekiel talks about him saying that he is the arm the strong arm and he is the hand of God later on we see in Isaiah that he is not just the strong arm but God brought the Egyptians or the Israelites out of Egypt by the strong arm and the strong hand of God and he is called the finger of God please understand the finger of God Psalm 8 3 through 4 look at what this says when I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers the moon and the stars you set in place. What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care about them. You see, it was God who said, let there be stars. It went through Jesus, but it was the finger of God, the Holy Spirit, who lifted the stars, trillions of pounds, and put them in place. It was the Holy Spirit that took the moon and he threw it over there. It was the Holy Spirit who took the sun and he spun it and he put it over there. It was him who said, I'm not okay with one galaxy or five galaxies or a thousand galaxies, but how about a million galaxies? How about so much that scientists will never be able to have a telescope to see how far out I can create? How about I just wreck everybody's ideas of how weak I am? Do you really understand and do you really think that a God who can pick up stars cannot pick you up out of a gutter when you get drunk? Exodus 31 18 when the Lord finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai he gave him two tablets watch this and he inscribed on the terms written by the finger of God there he is again you see it wasn't just some cloud that came down in the form of a hand and no not like our cartoons that we got in children's church it was a person the Holy Ghost was inscribing literally the heart of God on tablets and writing them do you think that he cannot write his word onto your heart. Luke eleven nineteen 19 through 20. If I cast out demons, this is Jesus speaking by Beelzebub, by whom your sons cast them out, therefore you will be my judges. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, you see, who was it who was really casting them out? Jesus was saying it because it was the will of the Father, and he never did anything outside of the will of the Father. He never spoke. He never moved unless the Father first did it. But the one who actually told those demons to get out was the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 48, 13, oh my gosh, it was my hand that laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand sprout out on the heavens above. When I call out the stars, they appear in order. Who laid the foundations of the earth? It was the Holy Ghost. God said it. It went through Jesus, but the Holy Spirit manifests. Jesus, Genesis 1-2, it says that the earth was formless and void. There was something going on. Nothing had been. So the Holy Spirit, it says, was hovering. 
like a dove. He was hovering. The dove was hovering, but he was waiting just for the word of the Father, word of God to be spoken. And once he had a word to connect to, the Holy Spirit manifested the stars. The Holy Spirit manifested the water. The Holy Spirit manifested everything. Do you understand that it is the Holy Ghost, the person who's with you right now, who is the one that actually has all the answers you need? And do you know how far away he is? He's right there. Let me say this to you. Your answer is closer than you think. Isaiah 64, 8. This is so good. And yet, oh Lord, you are my father. We are the clay. You are the potter and we are formed by your, who's the hand of God. It's the Holy Spirit who's forming you. He's changing you. John 16, 7. This is one of my favorite. Then this huge acclamation of Jesus. After all of this time and we're finding out who this person was that he was carrying. We see this incredible statement. One of the most powerful statements Jesus ever said. And it was in one of his last speeches. And the Bible says, nevertheless, Jesus speaking, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I get out of here. You got you to gotta understand what that means. Jesus has just shown off so much that John wrote in three years, if I was to write down all the miracles and all the things that he did, it would fill more books than all the libraries could contain. And in three years, then Jesus comes and says, as great as that was, what I'm about to give the people after this is better than if they would have had me here in the flesh. You didn't hear what I just said. He said, it's better that I get out of here because I'm limited. Think about this. Jesus was limited to his body. If we want to talk to him, we got to fly over to Tel Aviv. We got to get in a taxi. We got to try to go all the way over to Jerusalem or wherever he's at. Sea of Galilee. Maybe he's jumping on the water a little bit and we got to wait for him on the beach, whatever. We got to get in line. And you better have already had your question already in order. You better written down your list because the moment you're with them, you better say it all. And you can't come back because once you get out of that list, you got about a few million people. But he says, the one who's coming after me is me unlimited. He's me unlimited. I don't know how many Christians I've heard say, man, wouldn't it have been amazing to walk with Jesus between town to town? Wouldn't it have been incredible to see him open those blind eyes? What would it have been like to watch him walk on the water? And I'm with you. It would have been incredible. But according to the Son of God, he says, as good as it could have been if you were here, you didn't miss out because the best was yet to come. And when I leave, I'm sending someone who can be in Africa right now. I'm sending someone who's in Asia right now. I'm sending someone who's at the Wayworld Outreach tonight. I'm sending someone that you could call on me in a gutter over in the middle of San Bernardino. I'll call you. I'm coming on somebody that anywhere you can go. I am unlimited. The Holy Ghost is Jesus unlimited. And he says these incredible words. And this is one of the main messages I wanted to tell you tonight. For if I do not go away, John 16, 7, the helper, somebody say the helper. The helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I'm going to send him. In other words, the Holy Spirit cannot come till I get out. There's not room enough on this earth for both of us. I got to go up. And start praying for you. Do you know that the moment Jesus entered heaven, he started praying for you? It said that he's right now sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. And he's praying for you. I don't know who you've had pray for you before. But can I just say their prayers ain't nothing like Jesus's? Can I just say that if Jesus is praying for you, there might be a reason you haven't given up yet? Can I just say if Jesus is praying for you, there might be a reason you're still here? Can I just say because Jesus is praying for you, there might be something working? Because I don't know about you, but the prayers of Jesus, they work. He's praying for you, but he says the helper. He says this one that I carried. God, look at this. Look at this. This one that I carried for all this time. I'm going to send him to you. Now, please get what I'm saying. First Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says, don't you know that your body is now a home? It's a temple. Would you look at your hands? Everybody put your hands up in front of your eyes real quick. I want you to think about something. 
What have those hands done that you are ashamed of? Look at them. Don't turn away. Don't look at me. Look at your hands. You know what they've done. What have those hands been into that displeased God, that were, that were ugly? Maybe before you were saved, after you got saved. Now I want you to look at your feet. Where have those feet walked that you should not have gone? Where have these feet taken you? What kind of places did these feet put you in that you should have never been in? I want you to just touch your mouth. Uh-oh. See, everybody, uh-oh. What things have come out of this mouth that did not bring life? Maybe they brought curses. Maybe they destroyed someone you loved. What things have you said that you wish you could have taken it back, but it was already out of this mouth? This home is pretty messed up. But listen to this. God looked at these feet, these hands, this mouth, this rotten mind. And he said, that is my perfect makeover home. You didn't get what I just said. He looked at yourself and he said, that is my perfect idea, dream home. He's called the helper. Touch somebody beside you and I want you to tell him, did you know you have help? Say it again. Did you know you have help? You're not understanding what I'm saying. I know that you cannot stop the drugs. I understand that you've tried many, many times. I understand that it's too much. When you smell it, you can't get away from it. I get it. But I want you to know you have help. I know that you can't put down the bottle. Once you smell it, you're addicted to it. You've tried so long. But I just want you to know, in 2022, if you want to take advantage of it, you have help. I know that you can't stop looking at the women. I know that you can't get over it. I know that you've gone in circles and circles and you hate it about yourself. But I just want you to know, you have help. I know it that your children are going crazy right now. I understand that they've been out of your house. They've been in your house. Maybe they're still in. I don't know what's going on. But I just want you to know, if you want to take advantage, of it in 2022 you have help somebody needs to hear that you got some help you are not alone somebody needs to know that your child is not alone somebody needs to know that if you start praying right now that if you have a little bit of faith inside that the helper the one who can lift the stars can lift your child out of anything that the helper the one who can come do you understand what i'm saying you have help and i would suggest you could keep doing it your way, or you could try this year to get some help. There's no helper. There's no helper like the Holy Spirit. What was it about Jesus? Can you come on back, Chris? Team, please come. What was it about Jesus that the Holy Spirit was able to remain and never had to leave? Well, he had no sin. Even though he was tempted in every single thing that we're tempted for, he never followed through. He felt the temptation for a woman. He felt the temptation for lust. The Bible said he felt every temptation that man would feel so that when we would cry out to him, he could relate. He could relate, not just some of the temptations, every one. He had the temptation to lean on other things. To lean on himself. Look at him in the Garden of Gethsemane. You think God would even worry about what's coming? He's God. No, he was fully a man in that moment. He came to God and he said, Lord, if it's possible, I don't want to do this. It's a man talking. Lord, I, I, I'm looking at what's coming my way and I don't want to pay that sacrifice. That's why the victory of the cross wasn't won when he was on the cross. The victory of the cross was won in Gethsemane. Because at that point, he laid down himself. 
He was honest with God. He said, Lord, if it's possible, Father, please, uh, I don't want to do this. But God, I'm just, I'm, I'm not my will, but yours be done, Lord. I... What was it about Jesus? There was something about his attitude. We get an answer in 1 Peter 4, 1 through 2. Listen to this. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh, listen to it, has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Now, when people think of the word suffering, Christianity has a huge deal with this. This is, this is something that's very mispreached. Uh, it's misconstrued. When you're talking about suffering, it's either one of two things. It's, it's I'm going to be a martyr. Uh, I need to go to some foreign country, give up my family, give up my life. I need to be willing to live in poverty. See when the next meal's coming. That's our idea of most of the time when we say suffer. The blessings are gone. I'm just going to live a life of suffering now. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Do you think Jesus really did all he did by living for those years on earth? Coming, taking all the things to take your penalty that you deserve just so now you could also suffer? I thought he took all the suffering so we could get some victories. I thought he took sickness so you could be healed. I thought he took the curse so you could be blessed. You know what suffering means when it's saying suffering in the flesh? We have an answer in Galatians 5, 19 through 23. We should just read the Bible. Don't guess. Don't be like, I don't know, I heard a sermon today. I, I don't know if we're living for God anymore because we, we're a little bit blessed. I guess we should just sell all our cars and go get back on the street again. I, I thought God brought us out of that, but obviously we ain't suffering enough. So I just read the Bible. Find out what he's actually saying. Look at this. He's talking about the flesh. Now the practices of the sinful nature or the flesh are clearly evident. You want to see the things that need to suffer? Here you go. Sexual immorality. How many of y'all know that's gotten you in some trouble before? You don't want that to be a part of your life. It's not a shame for that thing to suffer. You need to let that suffer. Impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control. Can somebody holler and say, man, I've had some lack of self-control. How many of y'all have ever made a New Year's resolution and you broke it on day two? Come on. You got the willpower, but it lasted 24 hours. I got my 24-hour willpower pill. I'm going to start again in February. Let's go back to the gym. I'm going to go back to the gym, man. Woo, you're on that treadmill day one. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Mercy. Day two comes, you're like 6.30. Uh-uh. I have my 24-hour willpower pill. I took it and it's gone. I need another five-hour energy. I need a 10-hour energy. I need a 20-day energy. idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of rage. How many of you guys when, who had an issue with anger, if you were honest, you're like, yeah, that's me. I have, I've, I've had an issue with anger. Uh, how many of y'all felt the presence of God when you were raging? Anybody? Anybody was just like, man, I got done with that rage fest breaking stuff and, you know, scaring everybody that I loved. And, you know, I got done. I was like, man, God, your presence is so strong right now. It needs to die, y'all. That needs to suffer. Are you getting what I'm saying? These things can suffer, and you'll be happy that they're suffering. Disputes, dissensions. Lord, we need some help. In our families, our houses are houses of strife. They're not houses of peace. We scream and yell at each other so much, no wonder we can't hear God. We're so loud. Breaking each other's hearts. Our children don't want to come home. It's a war zone. I mean, you know, if that suffers, you'll be happy. Drunkenness, 
it needs to suffer. Riotous behavior, it needs to suffer. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things won't even get into the kingdom. That word practice doesn't mean you did it one time. It doesn't mean that you had a season. It doesn't, that he's not talking, he said those who have gotten to the point where they have now called these sins a part of who they are. They've accepted, well, God just made me this way, so I'm not going to fight it anymore. I, I guess if God wanted to heal me or keep me from this addiction, he would have done it already. I prayed so many times and he hasn't taken it away, so I guess it's just something I get to have. And, But if you have a repentant heart, in just a moment, we're going to open up this altar. You know what's going to happen? This altar is going to become the altar that's lit on fire. And you're going to do a Romans 12. You're going to offer your body brand new. Many of you in here are going to re-offer your body brand new as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God you see God did not want a dead sacrifice because he just pulls you up there and you had no will in the matter he wants a living vessel to say I want to be burned he wants a living vessel to say put me on that altar I'm willingly putting myself, my will, my hands. I don't have it all together. I'm going to need some discipleship. I'm going to need some help. I'm, I'm going to need some steps. But I am dedicating my body again. My, these hands that have done so much damage. These, these feet that have been in places that I know I shouldn't have gone, even as a Christian. And this mouth that have said things, dear God, in my marriage to my children. And I, I, I want the coals to touch my mouth again. Because you want to be a hosting place for the dove. I feel so strongly, Pastor, about L.A. I feel so strongly. I feel like the dove has already entered into L.A. before you even got there. I'm telling you, there is the dove is already hovering in L.A. He's just waiting for you guys to get over there and start speaking the word. I'm serious. It's going to be unbelievable. Jesus hosting the dove there was something in his attitude he dedicated his life and he knew that when he started he would suffer not suffer in poverty not suffer in all of those things he would suffer in the temptations he would have to say that's not what I'm gonna do I'm choosing God's will not what I want not the things that are gonna hurt my family not the things that are going to drive me away from the people I love. Not the things that are going to dis disregard and, and cut me off from my daughter, cut me off from my son. Not the things that I'm going to be ashamed of. I'm going to say yes to God. His strength in this moment. The tangible presence of God is in and wanting to rest on many of you. You have gifts inside of you you don't even know about. And some of you have gifts that you do know about, but you've been timid. I guarantee you, once the tangible presence begins to touch you, you're going to stop seeing all these inadequacies. And you're going to see the might of the arms that are holding you up in the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to see the hands that are gripping you, that are embracing you. You're going to see the power in his voice as he speaks into your spirit, things that nobody else knows. The answers that you'll get on your knees even more than you'll get in any church service because the dove is gonna go home with you tonight see my dad was here about a week and a half ago and I know that he prayed for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because you see in the book of Acts it says that they were all up in that room and they were waiting and it said that when the Holy Spirit came in he came in like a mighty wind you see when the Holy Spirit comes in, he comes loudly. But when he leaves, he leaves very quietly. When the devil comes in, he comes in very quietly. But when he leaves, he leaves loudly. And it said that the wind came in. And it said that tongues of fire sat on them. Now, once again, in children's church, we've seen these little candles. But that's not the flame that sat on that 120 in that upper room. It literally means their entire body from head to toe was wreathed in holy flame. And why it looked like tongues is because their bodies were waggling. 
under the full flame and their bodies looked like tongues of fire. It was a full immersion. They were fully covered. The substance took them over. God wants to do it for you tonight. Some of you are already baptized in the Holy Ghost, but you need the Holy Spirit to come upon you in power tonight. You need him to touch you as a father because you are struggling as a father. You're failing yourself. You're failing your kids. You hate yourself. You need it as a son. You're ashamed of yourself as a son. You're ashamed of yourself as a daughter. You needed help as a mother. You need the dove to go with you tonight. Be with you in the car. When you wake up in the morning, you'll feel you can say good morning to him before anyone else. There's a tangibility. If that's you, I need a fresh time. I need that settling presence. I believe the entire church is about to get it this year. I see pastor signs and wonders happening this year in services. I'm talking notable signs, the undeniable. I see someone's legs going to grow out this year. I see that people are going to have issues with their spine and their spine is going to be straightened up this year. I see multiple cancers will be healed this year. I'm not just speaking now. I'm telling you what I'm seeing in the spirit. I see that because this place will be the house of the supernatural, because this will be a place where the dove can come and rest himself, he will show off on your behalf this year. And the downtown campus, man, it's going to be crazy stuff with the downtown campus this year. It's, it, I, I, I literally, I can't wait to go back there. I think I'm going back in June to the downtown campus. And I'm telling you, there's going to be such amazing, not just breakthrough, not just deliverances. I, they've seen all that. I'm talking, there's going to be a heart that's put in the downtown people, the downtown campus, that is so full of love. You're going to be so satiated with God's love. The smiles, I see joy bubbling out of people in the downtown campus so i see people laughing for random reasons i see so much laughter because there's been a hole of depression that's been on there there's been sadness depression trying to keep people in that area but that cloud is lifting the people who come into that church they're walking out with smiles so big the love of god will pour through their hands it'll pour through their feet i'm telling you it's going to come on their houses their children are going to be bathed in the love of god and they're going to stop wanting to rebel and they're going to come to god there's going to be a family revival and deliverance for the wayworld outreach a whole family i said a whole family a whole family i'm talking your son i'm talking your daughter i'm talking your brother i'm talking your sister there's a whole family that's happening this year God knows what he's doing y'all I needed to be here tonight just to remind you you have help and the Holy Spirit wants you to host him he wants to be in a resting place where he can remain Wow! what if we walked totally aware of the dove that picture just won't let me go everyone who wants that fresh touch to be immersed tonight if you need to be baptized in the holy ghost you can be a part of this too but i'm talking about for people who say i want to put my body willingly back on the altar these hands have done enough these feet have done enough this mouth has done enough these eyes have seen enough and i'm ready to put my body on that flame i need to be purified inside and out i want god to touch me you need to get up here to this altar right now you need to come don't wait come up here right now look at these people coming i need a fresh touch of god I need the holy flame of God to come upon me and touch me and burn out my insecurities again. It's not just up to the pastor. It's not just up to the staff. God is wanting to make you a resting place for the Holy Spirit, a host of his tangible presence. Come on, come on. All the way to the side, all the way over here. We're going to sing this song. We're going to sing this chorus, Give Me Jesus Again. And as we are singing and lifting him up, man, I love this song. <laughs> as we are singing and lifting him up, I want you to be aware of what's going to happen. When the Holy Spirit touches someone, he has to drive out the spirits that are contrary to him. So I need you to know, don't be worried if stuff starts happening. 
when he comes in he comes in loud he's going to touch you and some of y'all need deliverance you need help if god doesn't deliver you you're never going to find freedom don't be afraid of it receive it it's the love of god it's going to happen in a mass way tonight i'm not going to touch every one of you but the holy spirit the dove is big enough he's going to fill this room even you who are in your seats god's going to start touching you in your seat especially if you have family members who you need a breakthrough for this year this is your year this is your year for your family this is your time I want you to lift your hands up don't look at me lift your hands up the quicker you get your focus on Jesus the quicker something will happen you see people who get healed are people who begin to forget about their sickness and they begin to see how beautiful Jesus is. They worship him for his beauty. They worship him for his greatness. And once he becomes more real than the sickness that's in your body, your sickness will be gone. Once you know that the dove, his arms are stronger than the addiction that's gripping you, that addiction will leave. God's already beginning to touch people right now. Oh my God, oh my God. Come on, don't wait for me. Begin to just dig into God. Begin to say, I love you. I need you. If you have a prayer language, begin to pray that right now out loud. Come on, begin to pray. If you do not have a prayer language, I want you to say worship, praise, phrases. I love you. I worship you. You're incredible. Come on, in English, I worship you. I thank you. You're so magnificent. You're so powerful. You're so magnificent. You're so powerful. You're amazing. God, I thank you. I thank you. Come on, if you have a prayer language, pray that. If you don't have a prayer language, pray praise phrases. I praise you. I worship you. Hands are lifted. Oh, God's going to touch you. And you can. Come on, just open yourself up to him now. happening right now literally just a few seconds ago I saw it coming the Holy Spirit is coming mightily right now upon you I need you to agree with him and I need you to let go let go of that thing that's holding you some of you it's addiction I need you to let it go right now I need you to say Holy Spirit take over take over right now receive it receive the power of the Holy Ghost receive the power of the Holy Spirit be free in Jesus name be free some of you have serious thoughts of suicide depression and suicide be free in the name of Jesus let it go receive it by the power of the Holy Ghost there he is receive it receive it there it is my God my let go of your hate let go of your rage let go of your hate let go of your rage let go God's good you got to forgive let them go I know you see a face in front of you right now let that person go forgive them it's not about them it's about you getting free set yourself free set yourself free there's the power of God when forgiveness comes in the power of God begins to move let it go let it go holy lamb of God holy lamb of people are getting delivered to there 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 I'm seeing the power of God move let him free you let him free you let it doesn't matter about anybody else around you right now let him free you focus in on Jesus focus in on Jesus 
somebody over in this direction, you're feeling a warmth in your chest. It's because he's healing your heart condition. You thought you were just standing out there agreeing for them, but God has touched somebody's heart. You have a heart condition over here. God literally just touched you right there. Somebody in this section, you have a right ankle. On the side of your right ankle, God is touching you right now. Begin to move that ankle. Begin to put some uh, pressure on that leg right now in Jesus' name. My God, he's beginning to move. Oh, this is a place where the dove gets to come. This is a place where the dove gets to come. All I'm doing is agreeing with you. I'm praying perfect prayers for you right now. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through me. Perfect prayers for you right now. Jesus, cause you can from your heart. for sons right now sons sons some of these sons are not here they're not in the building but you have been standing for your son you've been standing for your son I'm hearing a word for sons lift your hands up come on some of the sons are here some of them are not here oh Jesus Jesus I'm asking that he gives you peace right now about your situation I'm asking that he sets your mouth on fire to pray for your sons. That he sets your mouth on fire to pray for your sons. I want to tell you something tonight. Listen, listen. Just real quick, listen to this. My little brother, 
two years ago became an atheist about uh, three and a half years ago became an atheist obviously was raised in my family my little brother disconnected from my entire family didn't talk to my parents didn't talk to any of us nobody the only one he talked to was me he went out with me every single week I just listened to him I didn't preach to him one time I just was there with him I was the only connection he had he, he disregarded everybody else he said he said all this Christianity is BS all this is ridiculous all that for a year and a half he was exploring other religions he was dipping in all kinds of things he was doing everything he could and during that time God specifically would do something with me I would be walking sometimes driving in my car different times and there would be such a weight that would come on my chest and I knew the difference between if it was anxiety or worry, it wasn't that. It was the feeling of like a burden, like, like a weight. And any time it came on, I knew God was telling me to pray until it lifted and to pray for him. And that was my signal that I knew when to pray and how to pray. Sometimes it would last five minutes and it would be gone. Sometimes it would be an hour and a half. And I would start pacing around, praying in the Holy Ghost. Why in the Holy Spirit? Because there's some people in your life that matter so much, you can't have one word of a wasted prayer. You need to know that God is doing his perfect will in their life at all times. So I would pray perfect prayers. So I would pray in the Holy Ghost and start walking. Then that would lift. When it would lift, I would stop for one and a half years. Every week, almost daily. And God told me something about six months in. You need to hear this if you have these sons. I, I promise I just heard sons are literally... They're coming to Jesus. They're coming home. They're coming to the Father this year. Sons. And some of them have known God and they walked away. They're getting on fire, man. And they're never going to look back. They're never going to look back. But he's told me this six months in. He said, Gavin, people don't understand the power of prayer. He said, so little people understand the power of prayer. And then he took me to Luke 18. Where God said, Jesus literally had an entire chapter in the book of Luke where he said, I'm going to say this to you so that you will pray and never give up praying until something happens. Because he wanted to remind them that sometimes it doesn't happen the first time or the second time. Jesus himself laid hands on the man twice. The man with blindness he laid hands on him. He said that he started seeing blurry stuff. Jesus laid hands on him again. If Jesus had to pray for somebody again, aren't we maybe going to have to keep praying and praying? So he told me, he said, he said, Gavin, in, in, in six months in, he said, as long as you pray for him, you will chain him to his destiny. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And I literally, I was like, am I making this up? And I'm telling you from that moment, every time I pray, I say, I didn't know what was going on in the spirit with my brother. I know he was checking out all kinds of crazy stuff. He was getting in, he went back on drugs, he was uh, drinking, all kinds of things were going on. And, and all kinds of stuff he came out of. And I, I just knew that, I knew that whatever was happening, the moment I began to open my mouth and pray in the Holy Spirit, that I was literally in the Spirit, it was like I was finding him wherever he was at. And sometimes I would get, even get images. And I put out my hands and I'd say, you're in your destiny. You can't escape this now. And a smile would come on my face. And it would be like this chuckle on the inside of my spirit saying, oh my gosh, as long as I'm praying, he can't escape his destiny. And God reminded me, he said, will I not get one man to stand in the gap? He said, I can't do anything until somebody prays it, Gavin. He said, I can do anything, but I've, I've literally, he's restrained himself to his own laws. And he says, unless you pray it, I will not do it. Unless someone calls upon me, I will not hold the judgment. Unless someone calls upon me, I will not happen. But he said, there are moms out there. There are husbands out there that are crying out. And if they will know that the most powerful thing you can do is not look at somebody and say, well, I guess all we can do is pray. Never say that again. Don't ever let that come out of your mouth. I guess all we can do is pray. Do you understand that prayer is what heals the land? Do you understand that it's prayer that set you free? Lift your hands up. You're standing for your sons. All the people standing for the sons. This is your word. I am lighting your mouth on fire with a hot coal right now. That when you feel that burden, 
when you feel that weight it could be in the shower it could be when you're about to go to sleep it could be when you're driving in your car that you will listen and you will open up your mouth and you will know that as long as you are praying you are chaining them to their destiny and in Jesus name I call sons home right now I call sons to Jesus right now come on receive it I call sons into the fold right now I call them into the will of God I say that they will perform their purpose I say that they're not too far gone I say that I don't care who's counted them out Jesus you've never counted them out in Jesus precious holy name one last time give me Jesus everybody lift your hands come on let's sing it one more time everybody together this has been a mighty night thank you so much for allowing me to come let's sing this out so loud Give me Jesus. I just said that because the devil's job is to make you think you didn't hear and you didn't receive why he wants to put doubt in your mind to steal your seed you have victory tonight you heard from God well, well how do I know you heard from God he moved you from your seat up here soon as you moved there's proof that the Holy Spirit's with you you would have not moved unless the Holy Spirit moved you now you must continue to be aware that you are moved by the Spirit the same Spirit that moved you 20 feet 30 feet 100 feet tonight is the same Spirit that will move you every day of your life if you're just aware of it God says this I'll never leave you nor forsake you you know what we're saying God's presence everywhere you know what we're doing is being aware of the Spirit he's with you the only thing that's going to happen tonight that's different than maybe before there's going to be a greater awareness of his love of his friendship of his help of his support i can do this through spi the spirit not by might nor by power but by the spirit i can do it i can do it by the spirit not by my strength not my willpower but by the spirit i could do it you got it you're not gonna get it you got it you have the presence when, when Jesus received the Holy Spirit and rested him like a dove there was a moment just like this he was moved by the Spirit to be baptized he obeyed baptism submitted to it and the Holy Spirit rested on him and never left tonight is a spiritual baptism you put yourself in position right now the Holy Spirit rested on you he goes come on let's go me and you are partnering for life let's do this together come on so God's with you just be someone say be aware Lord we just thank you for tonight peace is with your people breakthroughs with your children victories with your children freedom is with your children your friendship is with them he's with you say with me I receive my miracle I'm aware 
of the Holy Spirit in me and with me for the rest of my life. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand tonight. Come on. Let's give the Lord a big hand tonight.